we'd like to welcome you to the 2019 2020 Club yes. One Volleyball season. New decade. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> my name is Bree Isaacson and I'm the club director. And my name is Bridget Hack and I'm the business manager. And if you are new to Club One, uh, essentially what Bridget and I do is we put together a video so that the families can hopefully learn all about Club One and have any maybe questions that they have answered or we just shed maybe a little bit more detailed information on certain things within our program to help our families. Um, if you are a returning family, there isn't too much terribly new in this video, but it's always good to kind of listen as some things do just change over time. So I'm gonna go over several important parts of information about Club One, and then Bridget will kind of talk about finances and raffle tickets and essentially what happens from here. So um, the first thing that I just wanna mention is that all athletes must be members of USAV and AAU for our high school program. This will be listed on your step-by-step -step that you've probably already seen, maybe if you're watching this video, but we uh, participate in tournaments that are both USAV and AAU. So we need memberships in both and memberships expired. I believe AAU has already expired and USAV expires on Halloween. So all memberships will need to be updated prior to the start of our season and um, all forms and any kind of registration documents also must be completed prior to the first practice. The good news is, is that Bridget puts together a really detailed list of what's needed. You watch this video and then it goes through a one and a two and a three and it tells you everything that you need. And if for some reason you missed a step, she's certainly going to let you know in enough advance notice to be able to get it in. <clears throat> and um, But just know that all those registrations must be updated and all paperwork must be submitted prior to the first practice. And while I will come back to this, I can tell you guys that the first practice the, begins the week of November 18th, depending on what you know day your daughter practices. So all that stuff needs to be in. Um, practices will begin and you will get the practice schedule shortly after we kind of get through this tryout process. You'll get all that information in an email. Um, please know that we will not select teams until a several several weeks, excuse me, into practice where you will, um, we'll get to evaluate the athletes, we'll get to see them in different settings, we get to see them over an extended period of time. That way, if they had a bad day or they were sick or whatever it is, we don't make a decision based on a singular day. And we will kind of put those rosters together and then the tournament schedule will also come out and then you'll be able to look and say, okay, my daughter's on this team, this is our tournament schedule. You know, in each age division, they're relatively similar, but there are some differences based on team placement. Couple things that we just wanna mention about practices, we do ask that you arrive 15 minutes early. We just simply wanna make sure that we have enough time for the girls to come in, get their stuff on, go to the bathroom, especially in the winter months when it's kinda of wet and they have to change shoes and all those kinds of things. So we do ask that they get there 15 minutes before practice. And then um, if they aren't going to be at practice for whatever reason they're ill, they have a conflict, we do ask that they uh, communicate directly with their coach. Certainly at the beginning of the year when teams haven't been assigned, especially if you're new and you don't really know any of the contacts in that age division, you can reach out to Bridget or myself and we'd be more than happy to pass that information along. We do ask that we, um, try to not miss more than three practices for the course of the season. Certainly multiple sport athletes is a different conversation, extended illness, things like that do happen and we're more than willing to help with any of our families. But we know for our you know, teams to grow and our players to grow that they need to be at practice. Um, we do have a great thing where if you have to miss a practice, you can make it up. The only thing that we ask is that you make it up with an age division higher than your daughter. So we don't want people to go backwards. Um, not that they won't learn something, it's just not the same pace as their own age division. So that is available to our families. Um, we do have practice attire expectations, a Club One practice t-shirt, spandex, knee pads, socks, shoes, hair back, shirt tucked in. At the beginning, if you don't have any practice t-shirts, um, any athletic t-shirt will do. If you've been in our league or you've been in the club program before, you can certainly wear an old t-shirt. Uh, but then once those packages do come in, you would just be required to wear that practice, that Club One practice t-shirt. Um, we do run a master coach philosophy, which essentially means that every athlete in our gym is getting the same training. So um, 
there is one coach who is kind of responsible for the age division and and they'll every team is doing the same practice plan just on different courts the co the coaches are certainly interacting with their teams but everybody's kind of doing the same thing to ensure that every everybody gets the most out of the practices i did briefly touch on multiple sport athletes so we do encourage athletes to do multiple things if they can. Um, I always tease that I was 5, 10, and 6th grade, so volleyball was about all I could do. So, um, but if people are involved in another sport or they're involved in choir or, or band or, or things like that, we have really found a great way to be able to make it work as long as there's just great communication by the athlete and then the coaches if we can get a practice schedule and if we can get a game schedule and it really has worked flawlessly for us and we just ask that the same effort that's made to be at the other place is is made to be with us if you have to come early leave late or you know leave early come late whatever it is we're more than willing to work with our families for our athletes to be involved in other things um, as I mentioned before the tournament schedule it is, we have a template in place already. Until we get through the tryout process, we can't definitively say what tournaments we're going to be in, but there are a couple things I can tell you. The first is the athletes play on average two times per month. Sometimes, you know, it, we are at the mercy of when people host. We currently don't host any tournaments, but we like to kind of spread it out so that people can have a life balance. We can also prevent injury, but that's the general rule. Sometimes it doesn't work out perfectly, but you can kind of expect that on your tournament schedule. We do ask the general rule of thumb uh, when you go to a tournament is you arrive an hour before you play, 45 minutes before you officiate. Again, your coach would tell you what time to be there and where they will communicate with you, but just a general rule that's kind of what we expect from our athletes. Some tournaments are half days. You're gonna go, you play three matches, you play either in the morning, you play in the afternoon, and then you're done for the day. And then some tournaments are full day events where you play until there's a champion. So long days, but they're fun days because if you're playing at the end of the day, that means you had a very, very good day. So it kind of depends on what it is on your schedule. All athletes must stay until all officiating duties are complete. In club volleyball, you sometimes play, you sometimes are off, and you sometimes officiate. They do not up officiate, but they do provide line judges and a down and, and a work table. So please know that if your team has to officiate the last one of the day, everyone is expected to be there until it's done. We ask that you re respect the food policies of all the host sites that we go to. Um, I can tell you this, there is nowhere you're gonna go where they're gonna let outside food in. It just doesn't happen. Like we've come to that point so if you have a specific dietary restriction, you can reach out to Bridget or myself. I will tell you over the years, the um, host sites have fixed up their menu to try to accommodate maybe a gluten allergy or whatever it is. So they have, but if they don't meet the needs of what your child has or needs, Bridget and I can send something over and most times they're willing to work with us. One last thing that I wanna mention is, Tournament host sites do not release their tournament information or they are not required to until the Wednesday before the event. So you're going to get your tournament schedule from Bridget or myself. It's going to show that you play this Saturday, October 26th, and they're going to say you play, but you may not know the exact time. They will tell us uh, no later than the Wednesday before. So, um, and the reason that they do that is because teams add and drop all the time. So what happens is, is you start to get multiple revisions of the same schedule. And so to eliminate that, they try to wait until the Wednesday before. What I can assure you is you will know that you play that day. And as soon as that information becomes available, it will get blasted to our families. But just know it may be a little bit later in the week, depending on the tournament. Um, we Once we kind of select teams, and we're in tournament play, I do just want to touch on playing time. We recognize that playing time is also an important part of development. We think that practice has a strong uh, role in development, but we also know that competition does as well. We spend a lot of time making sure that we set up these teams so that the individuals can grow and the teams can grow and that each player on the team can get the maximum amount of play time. Please know that depending on the position that they play, it may give them more or less play time. Um, we are always open to discuss that with an athlete and certainly at the end of the day, 
we would want our athletes to be there and be working hard, um, but we've really never had. I mean, we're very fortunate with kids and, and wanting to do those things. So, But um, if for some reason your child is not liking the position that they're playing, they're not getting the amount of play time, we're happy. Uh, the coaches are happy to have a conversation. Certainly they work with the athletes every day in practice, and they would be happy to talk with your daughter and say, hey, here's the things. Quite frankly, they've probably already told them, but these are the things that they need to work on. If we're still kind of in that space and it doesn't appear to be getting any better, then Bridget and myself and the coach and you and your daughter can sit down together to discuss. We've done this many years. We've never not been able to resolve it. Sometimes the communication from us to the athlete to you, back to the athlete, back to us just gets misconstrued. So we're happy to sit down and, and our goal is to make this a positive experience for everybody involved. I do want to let you know that we have a 24 hour rule. I don't know of a high school or club program that doesn't implement this rule. It is just simply that you must wait 24 hours to discuss a concern. What I can tell you is, is that once it's said, whatever it is, it simply can't be taken back. So it does no good for us to have an argument or a confrontation. It doesn't solve anything. So we just ask that you wait and then we can always discuss after. Um, and we, we ask our coaches to respect our families and our athletes, and we ask that you do the same to our coaching staff. The one thing that I want to mention on our top teams, on our strong, strong teams, is that we don't guarantee playtime. I'm going to just say this again, that's never, we, we put these teams together in an effort to make sure that everybody grows, but there are some times that we have to make game time decisions or adjustments and, and just want to make sure our families know for our strong, strong teams. We do have some parent expectations, um, and, I, you know, we do this every year, and then I, I kind of laugh with Bridget because I'm like, we put this in here. We just want to remind our families, again, we feel lucky. We have some really awesome families at Club One, but I do coach high school, and, and crazy's out there. So we just want to throw it out to you guys just to make sure that, that everybody knows um, these couple things. And I'm just going to read them to you guys, and then they're also – available on our in our contract um, that you guys would see online but it's simply to be respectful of the club coaches and players to demonstrate good sportsmanship to club one players as well as other teams coaches and officials to support the development of each player um, and and what I'm just gonna say is this you are going to go to a tournament and your team's gonna have a bad day because we play so much right like there's just gonna be an off day and you're gonna to go to a tournament where there's a bad official. And it just happens. And the reality of it is if we keep yelling at the officials, we won't have any anymore because that's what's happening. There's a shortage of officials because people don't really wanna make a little amount of money to be screamed at all day. So I just ask that you keep it in check. In my many years of coaching, I can tell you that I've never had an official make or break a match on one bad call. So if it's really awful, the coach will report back to me and I can send something over to the region, especially if it's somebody who's a repeat offender but we just ask that we're just respectful of those things and let the kids play and the officials officiate. So just throwing that out. Um, I'm moving right along. I, You're on a good pace. I, You're really I'm on doing good. Pace. I'm yeah. doing good. And I'm almost feeling like I forgot stuff because I'm moving I'm so listening. fast. Okay. I'm listening. So the next thing that we would just talk about is travel. Um, so, Every every year we kind of regroup and look at where's best for our teams to go. We feel blessed that we have so many good clubs in the area that we get good competition locally every weekend. Um, but what I can tell you is a couple things. So our 15s, 16s, 17s, 18s, we do send teams to the Indianapolis Qualifier. And I see that it is St. Louis as well. It's called the MEQ Qualifier. And I'm just going to throw these dates out. Not all of our teams go to every one of these, but I'm putting them on your radar. And then once you get the tournament schedule, you'll have the specific information for your daughter's team. 15s on down, so 15s, 14s, 13s, 12s, they go to the MEQ National Qualifier in St. Louis, and it's the weekend of March 13th through the 15th. So if your daughter's a 15, while you don't know her team placement, put that on your radar. It's March 13th through the 15th. Um, the high school, the 16s through 18s is actually in Indy and it's March 20th through the 22nd. So you can put that radar depending on which um, age child you have. Some teams will also go to the Lakeshore Volley Fest and that's April 25th, 26th in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So it would be one or the other, not both of those, but those are kind of on your schedule. Um, additionally, for Florida, 
Um, so we do take several of our 15s, our 16s, and our 17s to Florida. We have taken 18s in the past, but we're kind of looking at ending their season earlier. So we're going to kind of talk through that once we get through 18s tryouts. Um, but Florida, they kind of change their dates and their weekends. It appears right now that we'd be there around June 20th. But again, nothing, once we get through this tryout period and then the next weekend, that information will come out to you so you can plan accordingly and you can budget to look for cheap flights or whatever. But it appears it would be around June 20th is when our first wave of teams would go. And then those that don't go to Florida go to the A6 National Championships in Navy Pier, and that's June 12th through the 16th. Again, they don't play that whole time, but that's the span that they're allotting. So depending on when your team and your um, age division falls, you could be there during that time. So those are kind of the year end tournaments. Couple things to just touch base with on travel is USA Volleyball is what they call state to play. And essentially what happens is, is they tell us where our families must stay. So we supply how many teams we think are going and then they come back to us with rooms. We are not cleared and accepted into the tournament until our roster is complete, our tournament fee is paid, and the housing is met. So when we, we will send it out to you in a travel letter. Again, you have to be on teams first before this can happen. We'll send it out to you in a travel letter and it will say here is the hotel block we have and you would contact the hotel or whatever the link was provided and secure your room, pay with your credit card. It is only visible to you. Um, and then just the only thing I would say is just be really careful of those like deadlines that they have and the extra fees like parking's always a big fee or things like that because those aren't things we can do or we can't fix if we you know if you didn't get to see it or if you don't didn't realize that parking was that much it's not something that we can fix so um just know that when you do those things just make sure to pay attention to those deadlines those cancellations and any of those other fees that you might incur so we'll send out a travel ladder for those for aau right and for Lakeshore, those are AAU tournaments, and so they are not required to be state to play. We do get a block for our families, and sometimes when we do that, we're able to get a little bit of a cheaper rate. Um, but again, if you have points or you have family or you want to go, that's kind of the benefit with AAU is that you can stay wherever you want. Um, both are great tournaments, and that's why we participate in both, but they just go about their housing services slightly different. So you'll get a letter from me about whichever events your child is going to, and then you will just follow the instruction for proper hotel bookings. So, um, and we'll get that out pretty quick so everybody can kind of start to plan. Um, if for whatever reason you're not planning, you can't attend and you'd like your daughter to go with somebody else, we'd be more than happy to kind of step in and help make that work. If you don't know somebody that's on your team, we've been able to do that in the past. Um, a couple other just important dates I have while we're here is we are going to have a scrimmage this year and we do that typically every year. It's always around the holidays. We get it. People go places. It's nice for us to get that in before we go to our first tournament to simply work out the kinks of rotations, especially the younger kids, but of all of those things. And it's intended to be fun and beneficial for our athletes and for our coaches. It's the weekend of December 21st and 22nd. I get it. It's like three days before Christmas. Bridget and I are running around like crazy, like, you know, trying to wrap gifts while we're in the office. In My family aren't getting in it. I'm like, done. I got a volleyball. I'm going to throw pumpkin pie on the table and that's our Christmas. Just kidding. Just yeah, kidding. We're, we just wrap in the office yeah, and exactly. exactly. the game. Yeah. So, so if you have already planned something and you're going and you're going out of town, we get it. There is no penalty. There is... But if you're around, we'd love to kind of get those teams going and just get a chance to kind of work through some of those things. Because once we come back, we start tournament play in January. It's nice to have at least had one round before that happens. Um, we do, we will offer, we did this last year, people were looking for some things to kind of get uh, like touches on the ball. So we'll have some club like cleanup skills classes before. They're totally optional. Again, Bridget and I kind of 
threw them together last year, people were asking like, hey, what can we do before club season starts? So again, just something to put on your radar. It isn't anything you have to do, but if you are looking for some things to just have your, your daughter touch the volleyball before the club season starts, Bridget and I will get some information out right after we kind of get through tryouts. Um, and then a couple other things that I have in terms of spirit wear, we will do an online spirit wear store. I know our families like to represent, so we will have that, but we will do that after we get through the uniform order. We'll do that after we get through the tryouts. So just know that that will be coming in case you're looking. Um, we do have a full-time recruiting record, I didn't even say that word, yeah. recruiting okay. coordinator, um, Corey Sackett, and he will have an annual meeting um, you can go and sit, even if you're early in this recruiting process, if your child's just in high school, it's great if they have aspirations or they've even just thought about it to kind of learn the process so you're ahead of the curve. If you're a 16 or 17, you're right at that time right now. So he works with each of our families, he puts together skills videos, and he kind of sets groundwork and helps the, communi the communication be initiated from the athlete to the coach. And then he has the ability to kind of step in after that um, relationship has been established. Because certainly college coaches want to hear from the kids first, but then we can kind of step in to see what their needs are, what they're recruiting, and help that process along. So we also have a website, which I'm sure you know, and we also have Facebook and Instagram. One thing I should tell you, um, we don't have anything past that because we don't know anything past that. Okay, so we don't tweet because, quite frankly, we don't even know what it is. I it's heard a that that thing's going away. I heard it on the radio, like no more. I was like, well, thank God we never learned how to do right. it because we'd be like, we just figured this yeah. out. Now it's just a bunch of words. Taking it away. It's words is all yeah. it is, and you just keep scrolling and reading words. I, I don't yes. get it. So we don't tweet, and I really I don't know what else there is but we don't do that either so we do do Facebook and we do do Instagram that's big. so check it out because we do put a lot of great stuff our college commitments tournaments successes any awesome things that we have going in in our program we kind of send it out that way we do update our website but if you want to know up-to-date club one information like our Facebook page minute. right like our Instagram page, you will not be disappointed. So that information is there. And we put there. cute babies on there, too. <laughs> yes, cute we babies. We put cute babies on there that represent Baby Club puppies, One. Baby puppies, puppies. Yes, yes. <laughs> All the good stuff. Happy thoughts. Yeah. So, and then um, if we have had in the past where there's been, like, some weather or whatever, we'll throw it up there. We do throw that on our website as well. But um, just make sure you kind of check it out, and, and that would be some great places to find information. And then if for some reason, you know, we're at the scrimmage or you're coming in, just know that our parking lot, it is tiny. We get it. It's it's You can park by the um, front of our building or the side by the garages, but you can't park in that next building over because they have their own customers and they want them to be able to park there. So you have to park in our building or you park on Coil Plus, which is the street that runs behind our building, or the Public Works building, which is directly across the street. All of those are available for our families, but just don't park down in those other people's because they kind of get upset about it. So, um, and then the last thing that I just want to mention is we're super excited for this upcoming season. I am going to hand it over to Bridget, and she's got some important things to say as well. Um, and she's going to talk about a way to win a free uniform package, which is very exciting. But um, New this year. Yeah, but we, we are just excited. Um... At Club One, we feel like we have found a little bit of a life balance where athletes can get better and have the opportunity to play in college and continue their high school careers, uh, but also be able to maybe participate in other things, too. Um, and we, last year, had 27 All-Americans. We've had 63 total. We have 100 athletes playing in college. In 2019, we had 86 athletes named to the JBA watch list. We have three college coaches on our staff, and we have 12 high school and middle school coaches. So... Um, we love what's happening and um, we welcome you and I'm going to hand it over to Bridget and she's going to talk about all the financial parts. She gets the fun stuff, <laughs> although I have a fun thing because I get to talk about free product and who doesn't want something for free. But right. um, we, I'm going to touch first on tuition um, and travel costs because of course while you um, make the decision to commit, that's a big thing. So our 15U program this year will be $2,850, which includes the travel. Now, on our flyer, when we put everything out, it did show our costs minus um, the two, uh, minus the travel and uniform. So we did this just for the youth, and I'm mentioning it because I did get some emails for people wanting some clarification. 
We do that because at the time when we want to get the information out to families, we're not quite sure of the travel costs. So we want to make sure that we have accurate information to give to you. And so that's why we wait. So yes. when you see that flyer, and if you were to say, well, this is what it said, this is the difference. The difference is your travel. So 15U is 2850. Our 16 and 17U is $29.50, and our 18U is 2500 And as Bree mentioned, they're ending a little bit sooner, which is the reflection of that cost. When you go to register, and I'll talk about that, but when you go to register, you have the option of picking the payment plan you'd like to choose. We allow our families to choose to pay in full or up to five payments. And the payments would be upon registration, and then if let's say you were to choose the five payments december january february and march 1st so your final payment would be on march 1st the system takes your total due and splits it into the amount of payments that you choose um, for your plan um, just so families are aware if you were to choose the five payment plan installments two through five incur a twenty dollar installment fee um, for the first payment there's no fee at all so you would have those additional fees for any months you pick. So if you pick three months, the first month wouldn't have anything, the second and the third month would. Um, so when you go into Sport Engine, you would choose your payment plan and that's how you would divide it up. So when people ask, are there other costs? The other costs would be uniform, which we'll talk about, but that includes all of your um, training, all of the tournaments, even the travel events. It does not include your hotel it does not include your either airplane or your car ride your food but any fees associated with the team and with the tournament is included in that total amount that I just gave you um, so with that you would select your plan and then you would be registered for the program everybody has an account because you've registered for the tryout please know that the link to register for the actual program is different so I will provide that it's in the step-by-step -step, but sometimes people say it's not letting me register. You probably went to an old link or the tryout link. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is uniform. Um, we are very excited this year. Um, we have been um, working with Nike. They put together a really great package for us. There are some new changes this year because, as we've talked about in the past, um, items do recycle out or cycle out of um, their inventory and it then puts us in a situation where we want to offer a good product, we want to offer new product, but we do want our teams to look um, the same. We want our teams to um, have the same type of you know gear and things like that. And this year, um, we do have some new stuff. So I want to talk about what the expectation is for uniform. We have put together a, there's two different parts of it but it all goes together. So what's going to be mandatory for everybody this year um, is going to be the jerseys. Jerseys change. Um, you'll receive two jerseys, your spandex. Instead of our old um, warm up that used to be the pants with the zip up, this year they are doing, or we have chosen, a cute sweatpant and a hoodie. <laughs> And we got really excited about this with the youth. I have to tell you, it was my favorite part of the entire video, but it is so, it's just new. It's more practical. You it's can wear it all the time. And it's, and it's actually less expensive. And don't tell the kids that we like it because the youth kids were thrilled yeah. about it. And then they found out we liked it, and there was like a little grumbling. Yeah, they're like, so oh, is just it old lady-ish? Like, no, yeah. it's not old lady-ish. No. Wait till you see the samples. Yeah. It's cute. No. It's really, really cute. But the great news is, like Bree said, you know, you're probably not going to walk around with like the zip up warm up jacket or by itself, like but you're going to wear this. Or you know? yeah, but you're going to wear the sweatshirt. So, you have that sweatshirt and the sweatpants, and our practice t-shirts. We're excited about this. Yeah. Our practice t-shirts are included in the uniform package this year, so they'll be shipped to you. Um, when you choose this, you'll choose three. Um, t-shirts because it's included kind of in the bulk package price so but you'll have to click it three times that's the unfortunate part people are yeah, a little yeah. confused like when Bridget gives you the price that includes all three but with the drop down it's only get it, it the system only allows you to pick one so you still need to pick mm -hmm. three okay tricky I know it's tricky. Technology. That's why we stick on Instagram and yeah. Facebook. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we could just have the store and have people come in and buy it, we would do it. But it, we do have to get with the times. They're telling us that we're, you know, even though we're not old, we're old. Um, and new, we have a new style backpack this year. And what we're excited about is that 
Nike's going to embroider their number on yeah. everything. So on your jersey, when you're ordering your uniform package, you'll put the number, which I will be sending you guys in a separate email, um, your number for the backpack and for the jersey. So that's quite exciting. So that portion, the two jerseys, spandex, sweatshirt, sweatpants, backpack, and three t-shirts is mandatory for everybody. The cost for that portion of the package is $255 plus shipping and handling. They will ship it directly to you and directly and to tax. your house. And tax. Why did I? Yeah. Well, that's shipping a, and handling. Shipping and handling yeah. and tax. I was mm -hmm. thinking I was saying the two things. So that's not included in that price. They figure that out at checkout. If you are new to Club One, you will, in addition to those things, need to get um, shoes, knee pads, and socks. And the cost of that would total $350,650 for everything. So that first mandatory part of it, plus the shoes, socks, and knee pads, is $350,650. For returning families, if you need shoes, if you need socks, if you need knee pads, you are able to get those kind of a la carte, mm -hmm. or you could choose all of it if you needed to do that. But for returning players, those three things are not required if you don't need them. So, the big news of the whole thing. The big news is that we will be, and I'll explain to you how you do it, but we will be giving away one full free uniform package. Shoes, shoes, even, I mean, the all whole of it, thing. the whole shebang mm -hmm. to our winner. And I'll tell you at the end how you can be the winner. Mm -hmm. The next thing, because now I've told you about all the money, is the fundraiser. How do I offset costs? And let me just say one thing about the money, because I'm going to let Bridget stay on track, but let me just tell yeah, you one thing. because this is where it gets long. Go. Yeah, just with the uniform, we've used the same uniform. The yeah. jerseys are always tricky, but the actual package we've been reusing almost for the last five years. Like, yeah. they've slightly updated stuff, but this year there was a total change. So when Bridget and I sat down, we want to look the same. We're a program, we're a club, but we want to be reasonable that there's a lot of expenses and how can we minimize those things. So our hope is each year is to be able to reuse it for as long as Nike yes. allows us, assuming they fit your child. Um, but there does come a point after several years where it just isn't available anymore. We don't want kids in half all of them different in, things. Half right? of them in cute stuff and half right. of them in older So we told this to Nike and we negotiated kind of on this price and we feel really good that I know it's another thing. And as a mom of four and a mom of four, it's like, please don't tell me that this is the best. You know, I mean, I get it. Yeah. But I think it, it's it's reasonable and it's good quality stuff for things that the kids will need and hopefully we'll be able to use it in the future as well. And the problem is, is that the kids love the stuff. They probably don't even need the new shoes. They still tell you. I get that at the try on all the time. They're like, they don't need shoes. I'm like, I know, they do this. So they do like, and it does fit them well, and, and we're excited for the package that they put to, um, together for us. But mm -hmm. one way to offset costs. Now, wait, let me just tell you one more thing before I forget. I think I told you, but... This fee is paid directly through Nike. Yeah. So this isn't anything that we collect. So